Hi everyone, I've managed to grab a moment, just a moment, of uh, relatively calm in our house. Uh, my husband has taken my youngest out for a bike ride. Um, she's loving it. They go out every evening after he finishes work. He's currently working at home. Um, and I normally spend that time sort of getting some dinner together, but that's all sorted and in the oven. Um, I've got my two older ones. They are upstairs and they are playing... Um, a game together on the PC. I don't know which one at the moment. Um, so they're sort of shouting to each other across the hallway with their bedroom doors open while they play. And my daughter is, uh, my other daughter, I've got two, my other daughter is um, upstairs. I think she's snug in her bed watching on her tablet. She's a bit tired, bless her. Um, so yeah, I'm grabbing some moments to share with you. Um, about joy and filling our life with joy and following our passions and doing things that make us happy and trying to unpick all the baggage that can come um, with this idea of um, being joyful and allowing our children to be joyful and allowing them to choose the things that they want to do and things that make them happy um, and conversely not um, forcing them to do things that don't make them happy um, or things that we feel they should be doing but that they um, resist. So there's this idea that um, children should have fun and it's not an unusual idea. Um, society is quite open to children having fun, um, predominantly weekends and and playtime at school, I guess, um, but also in their learning, um, trying to make lessons um, exciting and engaging and um, sort of elaborate and playful. So it's not an unusual idea, um, but it can, in the context of a school life and be quite exhausting for adults to implement that, to be constantly thinking of new ways to engage or to be constantly um, exuberating this energy um, that children respond to, um, to try and um, make sure they're enjoying what they're doing and that things aren't um, rote and ritual and, and dry um, all the time, or even any of the time. Um, but it's quite an exhausting thing for an adult to have to really be the entertainer um, all the time. And in some contexts, um, it's not a bad thing. Um, I think of things like party entertainers, um, you know, children love that stuff, but the difference in maybe a party situation or the difference in a home educating, unschooling situation is that um, the children are choosing to engage. They are, you know, they choose who their party entertainers. So they choose whether they're going to have um, the science party or they choose whether they're going to have the fairy party or you know they choose whether they're going to have the princess party or the superhero party and um, they so they've had their um, element of choice in that and also with parties um, children are often um, the expectation isn't the same as in school that they will sit and they will listen and you know they can get up and they can move around and they can go and grab a drink and you know, go and play in a different corner if they want to. Um, so the situation is really different. And that is what happens in our lives. That's what happens in unschooling families. The motivation is different. And the adults aren't left trying to make things engaging and interesting and exciting because our children are led by their own intrinsic motivation. They're led by what they find engaging they are led by um, their own um, interests 
their own questions, um, their own desire to find things out. And there isn't a need for adults to put on an elaborate show for them. And there equally isn't a need for adults to present them with things that are dry and dull and meaningless just because the adult feels that they should be learning those things. So children in an unschooling context um, can follow their joys, follow their passions, follow their interests, um, follow things that they naturally find engaging. And the best thing that we can do as adults is to support them in those things. Now this can also lead us to um, parenting decisions. So maybe not just about their academics and their um, learning, but things that we do as parents, what will make our children happy? So listening to them when they say, you know, the clothes I would prefer to wear are a leggings and a t-shirt, for example, and they don't want to wear jeans. Well, then we don't, we don't have to buy them jeans. We can buy them leggings and we can buy them t-shirts. You know, when they say, um, I prefer to use the green handled spoon, then we can purposefully provide them with that spoon when we provide them with their cereal or their yogurt or anything else that might need a spoon. Um, it's being considerate of um, which cups they prefer to use and which bubble bath they like. And this fills each moment of their day with joyful things. And each moment leads to a joyful day and each day leads to a joyful life. So we don't have to be our children's entertainer and we can just share in the things that they find joyful and we can be their facilitator and we can um, go on this little journey with them and find out what things they um, enjoy doing and what things they love and what makes them happy and what makes them tick. And to find out more about why choosing joy in our lives and in our family and in our children's lives um, is important and why it works and how it works and to read some examples of how it works in our family you can uh, follow the um, link to the blog below and to keep up to date with um, YouTube videos you can subscribe so that's the red subscribe button on the YouTube channel and you can also follow on Facebook and on Twitter so I'll put those in the links as well and next week we will look at the third pillar of unschooling together. I stand corrected my daughter has in fact been putting makeup on and um, painting her nails so I'll show you a little picture. <laughs>